Hello, brothers and sisters. So <clears throat> let's touch on the whole coronation. So he was anointed with oil from Jerusalem's Mount of Olives. King Charles III crowned head of the British monarchy. So Charlie Boy is now a big boy. He's finally got a job. This happened on Saturday afternoon. The coronation ceremony, the first in 70 years, saw Charles take the throne following the passing of his mother in September. In an ancient display of kingly power, Charles was anointed with the oil from the Mount of Olives, consecrated in a special ceremony at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in the Old City of Jerusalem. Interesting that they're trying to tie it as much to Israel as they can there. The head of the British royal family also presented with orbs, swords and scepters before the spiritual leader of the Church of England, Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, placed the solid gold crown on the monarch's head. Great Britain's chief rabbi, Ephraim Mirvis, attended the coronation ceremony along with other faith leaders. However, he faced the unique challenge of ensuring his attendance would not breach the Jewish Sabbath. Mervis praised the respectful, sensitive way that the British Royal Office, inviting the rabbi and his wife to stay at St. James Palace the night before so as not to have to travel using a vehicle. After the Christian coronation service, Rabbi Mervis joined the British, Muslim, Hindu, Sikh and Buddhist leaders in making a verbal declaration in unison towards their newly crowned monarch. So, yeah, 100%, they did well. They should be giving it to him as their monarch because Jesus is not their monarch if they have multiple faiths together all doing the same thing. There is only one way, and that one way is through the door, which is Jesus Christ. He does not share his glory. He's a jealous God. There is no place for fake gods. Israeli President Isaac Herzog and his wife Michal were also present for King Charles' coronation, the first Israeli president to ever do so. Interesting. And on Friday, the Herzogs attended a pre-coronation reception at Buckingham Palace, together with members of royalty, heads of state, prime ministers from around the world. When Charles took the coronation oath during the ceremony, he prayed aloud as he knelt before the altar, asking God, that he be a blessing to all thy children, to people of every faith and conviction. Okay, so that's the one article. Um, it's interesting for me that there was such a focus and a drive and a manpower that went into ensuring the Israel connection, the holy oil connection, the Jewish rabbi making sure he doesn't have to travel on the Sabbath connection to make sure that, and again, I do not believe he's the Antichrist, to make sure that he's very relevant as a monarch that's pro-Israel and pro the Jewish people, which they're going to look towards and see favorably going forward. So the next thing that came out of that is, is a good thing, I suppose. 350 million people around the world heard the gospel on live TV and most had no idea that it was coming. Take, for instance, the Archbishop's greeting at the beginning of the ceremony. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Hilarious. I love this. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Archbishop continued. The congregation's response he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Then, dearly beloved, we are gathered to offer worship and praise to Almighty God to celebrate the life of our nations, to pray for Charles our King, and to recognize and give thanks for his life of service to the nation, the realms, and the commonwealth. The King was presented with a Bible by a representative of the Church of Scotland who said to keep you ever mindful of the law and the gospel of God as the rule for the whole life and government of Christian princes. Receive this book, the most valuable thing this world affords. Now, Charlie boy, better watch out. Because when he does stand in front of Jesus one of these days, he's going to be reminded that he did get a copy of this book. And he was told the significance of what it beheld and who he was dealing with while he was busy with his nefarious side projects for the wrong side and the wrong team. But, again, 
It was a positive article. It's a good thing. And I'm sure the devil was not impressed that those statements went out. Whether they were from the right people or not, those statements were heard by many across the world, which is amazing. None of God's words go out and come back empty-handed. They planted seeds everywhere, whether they like it or not. Then the final one, and I left my tinfoil hat at home. I will wear it shortly. UFO spotted flying over the coronation as mystery object was seen hovering above the red arrow display. A photographer snapped a UFO flying over the coronation yesterday during the red arrow fly past. Simon Belson, 59, was taking pictures of the display, which was scaled down due to the rainy weather, when he spotted the unusual object. The snapper says he has no idea what the object is, saying that there has been a lot of unexplained sightings in the East London area recently. Brilliant pictures show the Red Arrows aircraft flying towards the mall in London, but slightly overhead, a red object hovers above them. Due to bad weather, he didn't check the photos until the morning when he looked at the one frame and saw the object that looked like an acorn, red acorn, sitting in the sky. Interesting. And they're not too stressed about it because they've been having a lot of strange sightings recently in the area. Maybe the Nephilim are shuttling to and fro to meetings with Charlie Boy and the other people in the nefarious darkness and Klaus Schwab and all these gates guys and everyone as they scuttle around like cockroaches to get everything in place because they're running out of time and everything's about to go down. I do believe the Nephilim are actively involved in all of these things behind the scenes. I do believe that they are back and they will be actively part of everything. And before you go, oh, the pastor's lost his mind, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the times of the end. Everybody cares to forget that in the days of Noah, giants roamed the earth and there were Nephilim. Interesting. It's a thought. Interesting that there should be a UFO sighting at the coronation by the man who at COP26 said, that this man who's going to save the world will have trillions at his disposal. Everything is coming to a head. I still do not believe he's the Antichrist. Um, I don't see him as this amazing man that everyone's going to fawn over and follow as they should of extreme power and wow. I do believe he's a very important key player, very rich, able to do things and herald people together and get things drawn up for the person who's going to be antichrist i am not looking for antichrist i am listening for the sound of the trumpet but we will cover all these things because they are interesting prophetic convergences happening at speed god bless keep looking up shalom